Hi, this is G65A21, and this is another Buddy Read with Katie. So, um, we kind of decided, although we ended up doing it out of order, we kind of decided we would go back in the pantheon of Yaya Sakuragi. End 2023 with some Yaya Sakuragi, and then start 2024. With some Yaya Sakuragi. Uh, so we're going to be reading Bond of Dreams, Bond of Love. Now, as I mentioned, um, there is... Oof, I can get these out. Uh, four volumes to this series. But um, there is the one that comes afterwards, which is Hide and Seek. And the one that comes before, which is a blue title called Tea for Two. And this one is the one that I was like, oh, if we're going to read, maybe skip this one. Because I'm not entirely sure how Katie would enjoy it. Um, I did enjoy it. But I remember it. there is obviously a bit of an age gap thing going on. And that's not to everyone's taste. And it's not even to my taste usually. But this, this is Yari Sakuragi. So I'm kind of like... Okay. Because she generally has a tendency to have any kind of age gap. Include the younger one as the pursuer, the one that wants to have the relationship and the older one being like, I don't think so, and being worn down. <laughs> and that's kind of what happens in this, as I recall. But it's been a while since I read it, but we had such fun with Hide and Seek that we thought we may as well just re uh, read this one as well. So for me, it's a reread. So I'm starting off the year with a reread, which is usually a good thing, <laughs> usually. Um... And um, this will be the first time that Katie reads it. So I'm interested to hear her thoughts. Because I obviously remember it and know what it's about. So yeah, these are the four volumes I'm going to be reading over the next couple of days. I am very busy. I have some taxes to do because it's January and I have not finished my taxes. <laughs> um, and it's the first time I'm properly filing them. So I'm very nervous. Um, we shall see how that turns out. Fingers crossed, everything's okay, and I don't have to pay too much tax, so we shall see. Uh, so yeah, I don't know how long it's going to take me to get through this. This might be a long vlog, um, or it might be like, get this done and then get back to focus. I might try and use this as incentive to get more of my taxes done. So yeah, Bond of Dreams, Bond of Love, four volume series, Yai Sakuragi by Sublime. This is what we're reading. So I have a visitor um, today. They got me some flowers. Um, we are probably going to be going to a charity shop to see if we can get some um, books or something interesting. Maybe something <laughs> worth getting at the charity shop. And then we'll probably just go for a walk along the beach as well. Because um, even though there's supposed to be snow and... Uh, wind and things like that it's actually not too bad sunny wise you know so I might just go and get some fresh air and exercise So we just got back from a day out and we went to the charity shop first of all. I picked up The Golden Spoon, um, which is a 2023 release, actually. Um, I saw it as a hardback copy, so when I saw this I was like, that's a fairly new one. So yeah, it is, 2023. Um, I quite like it. It's shiny. It's supposed to be um, The Great British Bake Off meets and then there were none, pretty much. <laughs> So we'll see if it's any good. I saw Meg from Meg with Books uh, talking about it quite a bit. Although in the end, she didn't like it as much. And then this one, which is a chapter on murder, Ravenous Readers by Sue Minix. I don't know anything about this other than it looked like a good, um, fun little murder mystery type one. There was quite a few good books in today. So murder at the bookstore, the murderous type. So... Um, yeah, quite happy. 
Uh, it looks like it's a Christmassy one, so I could always read it next Christmas. Um, I do have a few Christmas-based ones that I was going to read this year, but I didn't get a chance to. So, And then this is absolutely lovely. It's a John Lewis one. It still has its tag on. Gorgeous, lovely scarf. Beautiful colours. So soft. Like, really good quality. And yet, only £4. So, <laughs> this might end up being given as a gift. I have started early as my... <laughs> buying things for fairly cheap for people as gifts and then just having little stacks of gifts ready. I have already been into um, this lovely place called Dalmore where there's, there's like a farm but it's whiskey and things like that but um, they had the sale stuff on and I did this last year and bought things. <laughs> the woman at the desk was like tell me you're not buying things for Christmas already and I was like Mm, and I just gave her like no face and she was like oh I can't believe you're so organized and it's like I'm not I'm just making making the most of sales and getting things so yeah some nice books pretty new ones I, th I don't think this has ever been read I mean look at that that spine's not been cracked and that's a 2023 when was this one when was this one published it feels like this is new as well yeah 2023 another one so Pretty new ones straight away and uh, just put in the charity shop. So I, I got some good new books and uh, probably a gift. Although I myself like it. It's quite nice. <laughs> but I have plenty of scarves. I don't need to. Um, oh yeah, it might end up being used as wrapping. But this is what I got. Pretty good. So I'm going to have a wee cup of tea and, um, and then uh, maybe have dinner later. So I've got a delicious chicken soup and I just sautéed up some spinach and then had some uh, vegan parmesan on top, even though <laughs> I'm also eating cheese. <laughs> Doesn't really make any difference, but I've got some uh, cheese and onion pastries and also cheese scone, like proper cheese scone, homemade ones from um, the like fancy place that I go to. So yeah. This is delicious. I bought lots of nice things <laughs> that I might show you, but they're the cheese scones. Oh, they're going to be so good. And this has got actual proper butter on it as well. So yeah, um, a very nice and healthy dinner, I think, for this evening. So it is um, Monday. <laughs> uh, my uh, visitor is gone, so I now have uh, time to read a bit. But I was kind of a bit zombied out yesterday. And we just had a storm pass. But this is my sort of brunch. Lunch? It's mo it's mainly just lunch. <laughs> I've got some ham and pickle. And a, a vegetable omelette with a bit of uh, sriracha. Um, I have already now read volume one of Bond of Dreams, Bond of Love. Yeah, Sakuragi. I got a text, <laughs> a message from Katie being like, we know he's 17. How old is Ryomi? And I can't figure it out. I know at some point I've, I mean, I've definitely read this series. I've read it a couple of times. But um, I'm pretty sure that at some point I did work out what the age gap was. Um, but I can't quite remember. But I know that Ao is 17. Um, <laughs> he's very much the aggressor in this situation. Um, so, yeah, when you see them when they're younger... Um, I don't know. So what what do you think the age gap of, of that is? He must be around 17 at this point. So I don't know what, what he is. There it, it'll be in one of the it'll be in one of them. I'll find out at some point. It'll be like less than 10 anyway. <laughs> but at the same time, if he's 17 and he's 27, or even less than 27, he's probably only like I don't know how she she sometimes draws them as a lot older. He's probably only like 22 or 23. <laughs> still older but um yeah I'm just wondering what the age gap is and Katie was asking as well and I was like I can't remember I know that we find out at some point because this has been the the like the contentious point but weren't they cute together oh he was such like an older brother caretaker of him um but yeah <laughs> which would make anyone freak out if someone said I want to have sex with you and he's like what <laughs> Um, I do like that we get um, a recurring character. It's just nice. And obviously, um, uh, we also get 
um, Shu or Tanigawa in this one as well. So yeah, I'm enjoying it. It's nice. It's so well drawn and it's fun and um, it doesn't take itself too seriously. So you shouldn't either. And I love the dog. <laughs> I love how he get he gets told you've basically lived your whole life being um super aware of him even though he's just a kid like everything you the choices you've made have all been in some way because of him and uh and it's just like ah oh. <laughs> they are cute anyway so I have read volume 1 I will try and read volume 2 I just spent the morning um sorting out some tax stuff so i phoned payroll for my job and they have, have put me on a emergency tax code for the past six months <laughs> so i've been paying too much tax uh and um and they were like oh well you filled out this form right and i was like no no one sent me that form so the sh the lady was like she didn't say shit but <laughs> You could you could tell in her voice she was whispering it in her head, going, "Oh shit!" Like no one sent that. So I was like, "Yeah, no, I didn't. Say, I didn't fill that form out because no one sent it to me." Um, so yeah, she was like, "Oh, you'll have to check HMRC," and I was like, "No, I don't think I will. I think you just need to um, change that." <laughs> so I've I've done that already. I got the form. Of course, you have to print it out because they don't send you a uh, an editable PDF. Yeah, or like a. a a PDF form that you need to fill out because that would be too much sense. They send you a, a form that you have to print out. How many people these days have a printer in the house? I'll tell you, not many. <laughs> but luckily I do have one. So I printed it out, filled it in, scanned it with my phone because that's technology. <laughs> you know you're a, a geriatric millennial when you have a problem and you know how to solve it. And um, the problem is technology, and yet the, the solution is also technology. <laughs> Just depending on which, which type of technology it is. But yeah, so I've done that this morning. I probably will upload a video onto my channel because um, it's been a few days since my last one. Um, and I was going to plan on maybe filming one as well. Maybe filming a couple. But I also have my own personal self tax to do, um, as well as read this. But first, food, then I might read volume two, or I might film, either one. I might upload my video as well. Eat first, though. <laughs> I'm looking forward to this. It's just nice. It's easy. Like, I could sit and read this all today, and I might just end up doing that because, like I said, we had the, the storm, and it is horrendous. It's so windy outside. Um, I also had a box delivered from the postman, so we'll have that open as well. So that's what we're doing today. So this, I had to do it because the label's on the top. This is, this is my order. This is something else. <gasps> Yay! Let's see. I was like, oh, I wonder what it was I ordered. I can see that now. Oh, I know exactly what this is. I see exactly what this is. I was like, oh, is this another order? No. <laughs> this is something else I got. Oh my goodness, so much. So much bubble wrap making sure it's in good condition. Oh. There we go. Wow, very well packaged. Look at all that. Okay, so we have Volume 1, Boy Princess. Volume 2, Boy Princess. Volume 3, Boy Princess. Volume 4, Volume 5, Volume 6, Volume 7, Volume 8, and Volume 9. So yeah, this is the complete set of Boy Princess. I did get this um, from, is it Cat Manga? On Instagram. Um, she was selling them and I was like, well, I don't have the full complete set. I have volume one, uh, I think volume five. Uh, 
But yeah, it was a plan to get this all along. Me and Katie did Se Young Kim's uh, Sweet Blood. And it was a wild ride. Ridiculous. Loved it. <laughs> so we did think it would be quite good to um, have a go at reading uh, Boy Princess. But we'd have to collect it. And we hadn't collected it. So um, we're in the process of doing that. And I was just like, oh, well, there's a full complete set. Sometimes you do need to think about, like, is it cheaper to get a full complete set or is it cheaper to try and collect them secondhand over a long period of time? But this is amazing condition. Really, really good. Thank you so, so much. I'm very excited about reading this at some point. Um, it does mean I have some duplicates, so I'll have to get rid of them. Um, but these are in excellent condition. And I'm kind of looking forward to it. It's going to be good. So yeah, Boy Princess. That was not the package I was expecting, but it was a very good package. Very happy with it. So yeah, there will definitely be <laughs> a whole video at the end of January. Um, I didn't mean to, but this was a really good buy. So wow, what a brilliant bargain as well. So thank you so much. I'm really, really happy with this. So it is a little bit later. I've had something to eat, although I didn't really eat terribly much. It was mostly just snacky type things. Um, I have finished volume two of Bond of Dreams, Bond of Love. And it was really funny because the way that it started, um, I was like, okay, Naomi, it didn't take you long to, <laughs> to flip a switch and just be like, okay, then. <laughs> and I was like, where where did where did um your I don't know sense of reason go, um so yeah uh Al is very much pushing it, um with Ryomi and Ryomi is throughout this volume really kind of evaluating what it is he's wanting from the relationship, uh that he has with this seventeen year old, <laughs> and the fact that he's come to the realization that, um he's important to him and he's always been important to him but he didn't really realize that until um he kind of pushed pushed him to see it i like that when there's this interaction between shunpei and ryome uh we talk about like this from the first volume uh uh shu or shuji from uh, hide and seek was saying oh high school kids these days sure are big good looking too and I remember when I first read this I was like oh are they gonna get together because I did think Shunpei needed his own story uh you know justice for Shunpei because we know that he fell in love in T for two but he was just a wee boy <laughs> and so obviously <laughs> he wasn't successful so we already know about him um and I do think it's kind of interesting that Shuji was saying he was big and good looking because I mean I think we can all see a resemblance to the doctor from hide and seek so that was kind of interesting uh, but I do remember when I first read it I was like oh shipping <laughs> the flag's been raised but maybe uh, Yaya Sakuragi was like maybe not this time because <laughs> it would still be another uh, age gap romance and the thing that everyone really loves about hide and seek is the fact that they're two adults. So yeah, and this is not. I like Al as a character. He's fun and interesting. He's also very uh, straightforward. So he's a little bit weird. I'm not gonna lie. Um, <laughs> but I like his interactions with everyone and everyone else's interactions with each other. Um, it's just it's kind of like I'm not taking it seriously. I think if someone read it now, who's maybe a little bit younger, they might not enjoy it. I feel like this is of its time. And I did look, these were published like 2007, 2008 um, in Japan. Yeah, this is 2009, this one. So 2008 for volume one, 2009 for volume two but then published in english in 2011 2012 that kind of time which is like quite some time ago even in english so yeah i don't think this is the kind of thing um i'm i find it really interesting that this is one that was brought over but something like super lovers 
wasn't. Um, I just find that kind of like what we choose to bring over and what is acceptable, what is tolerant, tolerated, and um, you know who made these choices, that kind of thing. I find that really fascinating. But anyway, um, volume two ended with a bit of a dun 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 moment. We still don't know what the age gap is, but I'm sure we'll find out. <laughs> at some point um so yeah i'm gonna follow on with volume three i'll see if i can get it finished tonight but i might not i have just watched um a couple of youtube videos um and i'm going to go on to i don't know if you can see that marry my husband it's episode seven i think tomorrow's episode eight so episode seven just gone up and I'm obsessed. I knew, I knew I would be. Everyone is. Everyone is. Are you on the marry my husband train? Just, ah. Uh, by the time this video goes up, I don't know what episode I'll be on. Probably still loving it. So yeah, I'll have to watch that. Um, but I've been obsessed. I've been obsessed. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to watch that, read this, and I'm probably going to have a bath and go to bed. Um, I am working tomorrow, so I have a few things that I want to get done before then. So I don't know if I'm going to manage to finish this tomorrow or it might be the next day. So we'll see. Once I start working again, um, it does take up quite a lot of the day. And then I get home late and then I'm tired and I need to catch up on my sleep. So yeah, <laughs> vlogs are not always great when I'm working. So we'll see if I can squeeze in a volume here and there. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to carry on watching Marry My Husband. Oh my god, I'm such a fan girl for it. It's so good. So good morning. It's the next day. I've got some leftover omelette that I just took out the fridge and reheated. And some ham and some pickles and stuff. And a nectarine. Uh, my sister got a little box. The £1.50 ones. And I don't often get them. <laughs> Either I'm in and they're not available. Or... Um, I have to carry them back <laughs> but she's got she had a car so she was just like oh and she picked it up so it was like a wee surprise uh and there was nectarines in it and I don't often get nectarines even though I really do enjoy them and these are perfect because they're at that sort of like late stage which means they are actually ready to eat rather than the ones that you get <laughs> that stay in your house for two weeks solid as a rock and then the next day they're mushy and you need to throw them out so yeah these are actually good to go and a cup of coffee. That's my uh, brunch because it is later on in the day. I was trying to do some stuff this morning and not being very successful at it. Um, but I did finish uh, Bond of Dreams, Bond of Love Volume 3 last night. I need to put that up on my Goodreads. Remind me. <laughs> um, so yeah, there's a lot more development in their relationship in this one. Ryome. I mean, it starts off it starts off, I was like, oh, a bit of fan service. A bit of fan service for the girlies. <laughs> or the boys. Um, and we're at that point where it's introduced that there might be something happening that they have to move house and he's going to have to be separated. So there's a lot of like emotional stuff in this one. And at the same time, Ryome is really going through, uh, ha, this is how I feel. Uh, maybe I feel more. He's really developing emotional feelings. Like he's becoming aware of his emotions and that his feelings are both romantic and sexual. <laughs> and it's like, um, are you okay, sir? <laughs> we also found out that he is in his 20s, which means he could be 21. He could be 29. <laughs> Who knows? I mean, not me, not yet. I'm wondering. Um, we did have like a really cute image at the end of is it this book or the other book? Yeah, this book with the them as like reversed. Um, but I'm not too sure how I feel about it. <laughs> uh, but I do like uh, Shuji in this. He's very much like this is very much his character design. I I feel like in the first couple of volumes. She kind of had him as a vagueness, whereas by this panel, you're like, oh, that's 100% Shuji. She knows exactly who she's drawing and she's already decided <laughs> what she's going to do with him next in the next one. 
Um, so yeah, it's kind of funny to see them back as high school kids, which was all lies. <laughs> uh, but yeah, there's definitely a lot more um, development in the uh, relationship side of things from Ryome's point of view, I feel. Um, whereas uh, Al was just like straight off the bat. <laughs> He had one one wet dream and that was him. He's like, okay, I guess I'm um, bye. <laughs> and I also like that. I like that in the, when they're having a conversation about it, uh, Shunpei is very much like, he says he's bye. He says that. I don't know if it was in this volume or the other volume. Um, and he's like, oh, you know, ugh, they're, they're, he's gay now. And he's like, well, technically he must be bi. And I like that they are explicitly stating that because there is an element I mean you could definitely write a whole paper on it it'd be interesting to go into that the bi erasure within BL um, purely because it was never really talked about even though it's quite obvious that there are multiple BL characters and have been from from the get-go but then bisex how much was bisexuality discussed as a concept uh, versus an actuality within Japanese society and culture and how is that reflected in the media that's produced at the time anyway that's really interesting that's I find that fascinating that we're getting uh, in the year of our lord what was this 2009 2010 let's see <laughs> what when was volume three published uh in Japan 2010 and in English, 2017. So yes, in the year of our Lord, 2010, there was mention of bisexuality, which is quite interesting for me. Anyway, I find it fascinating. Um, yeah. So yeah, this is, I really, I could have just, last night, it was about, just before midnight, I was like, you know what, you could just go down and get volume four and read that right now. And I was like, no, don't, you're still tired. But then also I was kind of hungry because I didn't have a proper meal. Um, cause this is kind of filling. And then I just had snacks at dinner time. And then I was like, oh man, you could just, you should make some ramen. You just make some chicken ramen. That'd be really delicious. I was like, no. So I went to sleep slightly hungry. <laughs> Mainly cause I was like, it's cold. I don't want to get out of bed and make something. But it is absolutely disgusting here. The, there's another storm on the way. So it's not a winter storm like we had with all this, the snow. But I don't know if you can tell, I do have my lights on and so there's shadows and that's usually a sign that it's really gray and dark in my living room, even though I have two very large windows. And that means it's very gray and dark outside. It is midwinter and we also have Storm Jocelyn, which is the 10th named storm this winter season um, coming today or, or we're having, having her arrive today. Um, so yeah, it's it's not going to be good. We've got winds of up to 80 miles an hour, um, possibly this evening, when I'm coming home from work. So wish me luck. <laughs> I can go home safely. <laughs> who knows? This might be a vlog that's never published because who knows what's going to happen. Yeah, so it's going to be very windy. Um... It's windy a little bit just now, but not massively. So the winds will pick up, I think, later on. But the rain is just falling continuously, and it will as well. So yeah, I'm not really planning on going out anywhere. Um, I should have done something yesterday, but I was kind of tired. And also, I might go out on Thursday. Anyway, just rambling. I will be eating this, and I think I might just read volume four, which means this vlog comes to an end, unless I continue. <laughs> So we'll see. This is like really easy to digest. It's really easy to read. So you could just binge all four volumes in an afternoon. No bother. Uh, but yeah, being a bit busy and doing other things. <sighs> so I will eat and then probably just read volume four before I have to go to work. So I have now completed <laughs> volume four, Bond of Dreams, Bond of Love. Um, I don't know. It's just exactly as I remember it. It gets very sexy in this fourth volume. So just be aware. I did notice. See, you notice that? Like some of the pages weren't cut properly. So it was a little bit tricky for me to actually move on to the next page. They're not being bound great. Um, I wonder if other... I think it was just a sublime v 
Viz Media thing. Anyway, there's a lot of sexy times in this particular volume and a lot of emotional development, obviously, because it ends. Um, and a lot of the little stories kind of just all get, all the threads get tied up. It's all very good. Um, but you still don't find out how old Gyomi is and <laughs> what the age gap is. I thought, I thought for sure by the end I would know. But that's not the case. <laughs> So um yeah, guess is guess is here. Um I like that at the end Yaya Sakragi has all of the little characters and what she thinks of all the characters in this little afterword, which is good. I like that she mentions um Teruko, because that's one of the things I wanted to talk about. Um that I really like how she's drawn her and how she depicts her. Um, I just think it's it's so good because you know here she is with her like normal sweatshirt and she's just hanging out in the TV and she she looks like an elderly lady but still you know with a bit of um you know interest in her hairstyle and how she is. And when she's in the pub in her as her hostess role, she's a little bit more glamorous. The clothes she's wearing are more glamorous and she's got makeup on. And you can tell the difference of when she's at home without wearing makeup and when she's wearing makeup. And I think that subtle differences in how this character is presented is actually really great because a lot of female characters uh, in manga, especially BL, or I should say just in BL, they get... Um, drawn in particular ways, almost like cutesy or sexualized, and even in like this, Hako is like the cute girl, and her mom is very beautiful, and um, Teruko is, you know, she's of a, a woman of a certain age, but you can see the lines on her face, but it doesn't mean that she's not pretty or that you can't see that she was probably a very beautiful young woman, hence being the pub owner, but. It's just it's just nice that she's presented in a very normal and natural way, very accurate, I think. I just really like that. Because obviously in a lot of BLs <laughs> the women are not usually presented all that well. <laughs> they're either allies or they're they're the the bad guys. Uh but yeah, I just really liked how Yaya Sakuragi presented this um grandma figure in the story and she gave I think a lot of uh, respect to that kind of character. Um, yeah, older ladies are, you know, she's a she's a batan, but she's not dressed like an old batan. You know, she's like dressed like a normal working person. <laughs> I just really liked it. It was very respectful. I think. So yeah, this is the end of the story. They got together like you knew they would, but we didn't find out what the actual age gap is. I have to say, like, what did they say that he he decided to become um, the priest? He decided to actually take the priest things when he came to hang out with Shuji um, after telling him that he was a priest, even though he technically wasn't at that point. But they didn't say at what age that was. Was it in high school? Was it not? Um, yeah, it's just really because at no point do we know the exact age gap. But this is like, you know, a very much an age gap story. It's like totally presented as being an age gap one. But yeah, the cosplayness of um Ryome when he's always either in his patisserie uh, outfit or his shrine <laughs> priest outfit. <laughs> um. So yeah, he's def he's the one that gets to dr dress up in all the different costumes. But yeah. Uh, it's nice enough. It's definitely not my favourite, but I still find it entertaining and fun and a bit silly, even though I I generally tell people I don't like age gap romances and then I'll, I'll read this and go, that was fun. <laughs> and also I'm like, how come we didn't get super lovers, huh? How come? How come? Because <laughs> I really liked super lovers uh, when I started reading it, um, when it came out in Japanese. Um... It's in the same publication as this, Asuka, uh, CL Tray Tray, and Super Lovers was part of that whole pantheon at the same time. So yeah, 
it, I don't have much else to say. It was perfectly nice. I wonder how Katie's getting on. Um, I'll need to message her. So yeah, it. This is a very boring vlog. Sorry about that. <laughs> I've either been busy doing stuff with family, or uh, sitting about getting things organised and tidying, and uh, and then I'm off to work today. So yeah, I am a way to to get hopefully fingers crossed <laughs> to go to work and be back tomorrow. So yeah, done. I wonder what we're going to read next month. We haven't actually decided because we said we were going to give each other lists of things and I have not finished making up that list. I started and I have not finished. Um, so yeah, we shall see. And I'm also hoping that there'll be a couple more packages as well. So they'll have to be in another vlog or an unboxing on my channel uh, or my Patreon, I should say. I do have a Patreon. Um, so if you're interested, links down in the description. Uh, yeah, so thanks for watching this very odd one. I don't really have anything else to say about it. Bond of dreams, bond of love. It's good. I just think I prefer hide and seek. Just for the maturity aspect. And the fact that Shuji's just like, eh, alright. But I do think reading it in order of T, T for two, bond of dreams and hide and seek might be better. But then you can really see the progression of Yaya Sakuragi. And I'm wondering what she's been working on because we haven't had any Yaya Sakuragi printed in English for quite some time. So, um, yeah, a Yaya Sakuragi uh, festival might be quite good. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching to the end. Um, take care and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.